Welcome to our study of the Fundamentals of Operating Systems. This series of lectures is based on the book Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Galvin, and Gagne, and published by Wiley Publishing. In the last unit, we talked about the critical section problem and focused on how race conditions can occur when multiple concurrent processes share data. We went on to examine several tools that address the critical section problem by preventing race conditions from occurring. These tools range from low-level hardware solutions, such as test and set, to increasingly higher-level tools from mutex locks to semaphores. We also discussed various challenges in designing applications that are free from race conditions, including liveness hazards, such as deadlocks. In this unit, we apply the tools that were presented then to several classic synchronization problems. You'll recall that we talked about the bounded buffer problem, the readers and writers problem, and the dining philosophers problem. We'll talk about some of the synchronization problems as examples of a large class of concurrency control problems which are used for testing nearly every newly proposed synchronization scheme. In these solutions, we'll use semaphores for synchronization, since that's the most common way to present such solutions. However, actual implementations of these solutions could use mutex locks in place of binary semaphores. The bounded buffer problem is commonly used to illustrate the power of synchronization primitives. In our problem, the producer and the consumer processes share the following data structures int n, which will represent some number of buffers that are available. n is an integer value. Semaphore mutex equal 1, which will represent a binary semaphore to provide mutual exclusion. Semaphore empty equal n, which will represent a counting semaphore to indicate the number of buffers that are ready. And finally, semaphore full, which will equal 0, which will represent a counting semaphore to indicate the number of buffers that are being used. Let's assume that the bin, or the critical area, consists of a certain number of buffers that we'll identify as n, each capable of holding one item. As I said, the mutex binary semaphore provides mutual exclusion for accesses to the buffer bin and is initialized to the value of 1. The 1 indicates that the mutex is available. The empty and full semaphores count the number of empty and full buffers. The semaphore empty is initialized to the value n, which is the number of empty buffers in the bin. The semaphore full is initialized to the value of 0, which indicates that there are no buffers with data. The code for the producer process is shown on the left. The code for the consumer process is shown on the right. Note the cooperation between the producer and the consumer. The producer is producing full buffers for the consumer, and the consumer is producing empty buffers for the producer. Let's assume that n equals 50, so we have 50 buffers. When we look at the two sets of code, the producer and the consumer, we can see that the producer has some data to add to the buffer and can proceed because the semaphore empty is at 50, which means that a wait operation on empty can decrement the value. The consumer, on the other hand, cannot proceed because semaphore full is zero, indicating that no buffer has data and a weight on the full operation will not be able to decrement a value. In this slide, the producer starts by decrementing empty, which reduces the number of available buffers, and then decrementing the mutex semaphore, which blocks the consumer from accessing the bin. The producer then adds data to the buffer and increments the mutex semaphore. It finishes by incrementing the full semaphore so that the consumer has access. Once the producer is finished, the mutex is back to 1, full is at 1, empty is at 49. 
Now, either the producer or the consumer can run since either the weight full or the weight empty operation can decrement the semaphore. Now we see the consumer code. Since the producer has incremented full, there is data in at least one buffer and the consumer decrements full and then decrements the mutex semaphore to block the producer. Understand that the producer can still decrement empty from 49 to 48, but it cannot decrement the mutex semaphore because it is already at zero thanks to the consumer. So the producer is blocked for the moment. The consumer does its thing by taking the data from the buffer and incrementing the mutex, which lets the producer back in. The consumer then increments empty, which adds to the available buffers for the producer to use from either 48 to 49 or 49 to 50, depending upon whether the producer has incremented that semaphore empty again. It really doesn't make any difference since all the signal empty operation does is increment whatever number is there by 1. Now let's say that full is now 50 and empty is 0. The producer can't execute because wait empty will not work since empty is already 0. The consumer executes. It decrements full using the wait full operation. It decrements the mutex semaphore using the weight mutex operation. Now full is 49 and mutex is 0, but empty is still 0, so the producer still cannot get in. The consumer takes that last buffer of data and then performs the signal mutex and the signal empty. Now full is 49, empty is 1, mutex is 1. What is the producer doing now? So you see, from this classic example of using semaphores to control access to a critical section, we have solved the problem of diminished in data integrity in a shared area of memory. I have found this same demonstration in many textbooks that I've used over the years. Well, that concludes our lesson on the bounded buffer problem. So let's take a break right here. Go back and expand your study guide to make sure that you've covered any questions that happen to have arisen over this material. Uh, take care of any other business you might have, and when you are ready, come on back, and we will proceed to the next example of a synchronization problem.